Hey everybody and welcome back for another video. On today's video we are up to session number five of dealing with this brake change on my 2004 GMC Sierra. And you heard that right, this is a 2004, 17 years old. So as such, living in a, a very rusty area of Atlantic Canada, with the salt water within eyesight away, rust is just something we deal with on a regular basis here. And our vehicles typically don't have very long lifespan as a result. So trying to get every last year, every last day out of this truck can take a bit of effort and uh, definitely try your patience and your confidence. So that's the boat that I'm in, is trying to weigh things out on, uh, on cost versus outcome. All right, and I'm hoping that the outcome here is going to be more beneficial to me than if I had just given up on the truck altogether. So we started off with a pad and rotor change out on this thing and it's evolved into a lot more. Uh, we've replaced the calipers up front, did a lot of uh, manual struggling and, uh, and trying to get seized bolts and everything loose and parts where they need to be. So with all that said, we're on the third wheel here now on the rear, and last video we encountered a lot more trouble than we bargained for. But we're at the point now that we can continue a bit more disassembly, and then hopefully get into reassembly today as well. But we're going to start off with the focus being on the e-brake, and, uh, and we've had a lot of trouble with that being seized onto the rotor last video, and that was our big issue, getting that rotor off. So I got lots of brand new parts. I got a new dust shield cover or backing plate, whatever you want to call it. I got a new caliper. I got two new calipers actually, one for the other side as well. So getting into the point of assuming I'm going to need it. Uh, as well, I got a hardware kit for the e-brake, and uh, and we could be getting into some some tough stuff here now. Hopefully not. All right, so let's get into it. See what we got in front of us. I need to get this e-brake disassembled, uh, pull that off to get the new backing plate put in, all that kind of good stuff. Should be interesting. Hopefully not as much a struggle as last video, because my confidence is shook after that. All right, I was, I've been very hesitant to get back at this, so thankfully by recording it, it's kind of given me that extra push to, uh, to get out here and get at it and just start it and see where it goes. And we're going to find that out together. There's nothing scripted, nothing planned. I have no idea how this is going. I am not a licensed mechanic, so I am not necessarily doing anything correctly here. But so far the outcome's been good, with the fronts at least. So hopefully I'm doing something right. All right, there's your ramble. Let's get into it. I'll bring you in close onto the, uh, the rear wheel, and you'll see what I'm doing as far as uh, this e-brake goes. And I'll be talking through it as we go. It's probably going to be a long video, so be prepared. If you want to flick the video up to uh, an extra 25% speed or 50% speed to try and fly through it, you're more than welcome. All right, let's 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 start. All right, so here we are now. You can see the e-brake system. These are the brake shoes going down here. And there's a bracket down below holding them up. But here is your kind of piston system for the e-brake with the e-brake cable. Go back here and the spring to be able to reset that is there and along with the attachment point. So what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to go into the cab and I'm going to activate the parking brake and you'll see how this works. Basically you would picture the rotor on over all this and these shoes push out against the rotor to enable braking when you're parked. Alright, so I'll go activate the pedal and you'll see exactly how that works. So that's on. Now I'll pull the release cable. Let's do it again. And release cable. Alright, so upon coming back here, everything seems to be okay. This piston stayed out a little smidge. That actually stayed out more last time I did that test but I put a bit of white lithium grease on there and uh, and then some brake parts cleaner to tidy it up. Alright, so the cable we know, the spring 
all that works so I'm not going to be dealing with that except for removing it temporarily and that might be one little trouble area just a bit of foreshadowing there alright so let's get in here I'll remove the bracket below we'll get this shoe off and we'll start tidying this up and cleaning up for uh, to remove and get a new backing plate in there as well alright let's get out alright so let's get into it I start off I got an 8 millimeter socket and I'm going for that rear securing bracket that's okay now keep in mind I have watched numerous videos on this that doesn't that doesn't guarantee my success in any way shape or form it's just giving me an idea what I need to do so hopefully it goes at least half as well as they did so here's the old bracket and screw and I got replacements to that in the hardware kit so that'll be garbage so at this point See the bottom of my shoe is now loose, so they say to knock that out of there. There we go. And then to say the angle it just so to get it off the hub and there we are that's our e-brake shoe removed now it's at this point that I'm at a I'm at kind of a part that I'm worried about this is my main concern is that the parking brake cable in the videos I've seen they want this released and let go so that this pin can come out of this piston area and uh, and we replace the seal for the backing plate. So, like, there's no play in this. But this should just be compressed against here and held on by the spring. But it doesn't want to move from that mount. Although the cable is loose, so, sh well, somewhat loose. Not a big lot loose. <laughs> but basically we need like the spring pulled back out of the way. And this here to come out of its place. But it seems to be on there pretty tight. And we got a very fragile hard line here. Coming up very close to where I'm trying to get that cable away from right so there's a lot of high risk in breaking that brake line if I'm trying to really get that out of there you know so for that reason I gotta try and figure something out all right like that's not not even so much as not even so much as wiggling Alright, so you see the, the predicament. It's not a, not a good place to start off the project today, is in a predicament. So we'll see. Let's see what we can do. Uh, this here is a cap. All right, try to remember these parts. All right, this little cap coming out and there's a little pin that was seated inside that. All right, let's try to remember that. So this left side is a little cap. And inside that is a little removable pin and there is grease on that. I'll keep that in mind. I do have these as replacement parts. And 
next? Maybe with that pin out, this will come out. Oh, that's promising. All right, no parking cable re removed, but with that cap out and the pin, that's loose. Okay, that's good. That's promising. So next, I'm going to try and find something to unscrew this here. And so far I can get it with my fingers. This is the adjuster for the e-brake. Hopefully it helped that I doused all this in grease yesterday in anticipation of this video. And the bonus of having replacement parts is you can look at them and see what they look like in the hidden places that your eye currently cannot see. And I have seen this replacement piece. Alright, that's just one of your spacers. The adjuster. And now this big adjuster, a lot of people on videos, they just put a screwdriver in and hit it to to rotate it. So I'm going to start off by trying that. Yeah, it moved. Okay, so that is turning. It is coming out. I'll save you guys all the details of these little tiny turns that I'm doing here. So I'll pause the camera and get back to you when I got that further out. Alright, so after a good bit of spinning on this adjuster, I have come to the realization that it wasn't coming out any further, so I just tried it with my screwdriver and look at that. I guess I should have heeded my own words and looked at the replacement part to see that there's no threads on that. That's just another push-in piece. Alright, so that's that piece. Looks good inside. So now what I'm going to do is get some brake parts cleaner, spray it in there and uh, get some shop towel and give that a flossing inside just to clean it up a bit. Alright, that's that. Alright, so I'm just going to clean this up with a wire brush now. My neighbors decided that it's a good time to do some string trimming. So I, uh, I don't want you guys to be totally bombarded with that noise. So um, I'm just going to get into cleaning this up with a wire brush. And then I'll probably just uh, speed through so you guys don't hear too much of that string trimming. But before I go on this side here, there is a bit of hardware. I'm going to remove that. It uh, goes on over a little lip here below. I'll just try that off. Alright, a little, little curved bottom on it that slides over a little, little area here. Pretty much only fits in one way. Alright, you can tell the string trimming noise there now. So. I'm going to get in, use the wire brush on this a bit, and I'll be back with you guys very shortly. Alrighty, so now, as a result of all the brushing and scaling that I just did, Inside here is probably going to have some debris, so I'm going to give it all another rinse with uh, brake parts cleaner.
All right, so while that dries, I'm going to go and find the proper wrench to get on these bolts on the inside. I'm thinking it's an 18. And it is indeed an 18. Too tight of a spot to get a uh, too tight of a spot to get a socket on it. The dust guard might be more effort than it's worth. Let's see. We haven't quit early yet, so we'll try another little bit. Oh, it is moving. Okay. Alright, that one worked. Let's keep going. Number two. Now that were a bit easier because I had a downward force. That hasn't stopped us before. Let's scale a little bit of rust off of this bolt. I'm gonna try my little car jack trick on this one, I think. Safety glasses on, and I'm going to be hiding behind the wheel well in case this goes flying. All right. I'll tell you this, this little trick is working out better than I had hoped. Number three, I'm just going to reset the car jack a little ways down, and I'm going to get this on the last bolt. Like so, let's do it again. You guys moved over to a better angle again now, better lighting. But yeah, so the car jack definitely has a lot more strength than me, especially for those kind of angles. But as of right now, it's all loose. So I got my ratcheting wrench now. I'm gonna go ahead and get four of those off. Trying to, well, also trying to remember where everything goes back. There's one. That looks to be in good shape. There's a little bit of thread lock around there. Number 
three, one more. So take my safety glasses up off my face now since they're not in my fog. Okay. There's number four. Okay, so with the fourth bolt off, now I gotta remember where this goes. Um, now this seems to be all one part. With the, uh, let's just bang at it and see where it goes. Just flaking away old parts of the uh, the old backing plate. <laughs> yeah. That sounds like a 17 year old truck, doesn't it? Crumbly, crumbly. I'm just scaling old bits the old shield off here. Alright, so I'm just going to clean this up a little bit more and we'll be right back and, uh, and we'll be ready to try and figure out how the new backing plate is going to go on here. Now that I got that mostly tidied up, I'm going to have a look at the backing plate now, which I'm seeing one little, oh no, it's okay. <laughs> I thought there was a bent piece. But basically, we got to figure out which way this goes, and I'm going to use this little part here to tell me where it does go. Um, I'm hoping, with all my might, that it fits properly. Let the place going to go in behind here. Now, let me see. I didn't think it was going to be overly easy. Now, I could take this bolt off here, which would take off the, the mounting piece, but I'm just sizing it up to see. If even with that out of the way, if this is going to go in the right place or not. So maybe it's as simple as just releasing the parking brake attachment there, and then it should hopefully go in as a two piece. So I'm going to go find the right size for this bolt. We'll come back, we'll release the bracket that holds on the parking brake, and see if that helps us get this backing plate into the proper position. Thing is, once it's in position, I don't even know what's going to hold it there. Once these screws go through, I don't know if it, if this, I don't even know if this is threaded. I don't think so. Oh well, we'll figure it out. All right, so this is a 13. Over there. Write it down in the books, folks. First bolt to cooperate. Alright, so that's out. Keep tabs on that. Oh, so that just released the, the brake line. Okay. Let's see. We'll see if that helps. Let's see, I'm pretty sure it should go on like this. It's like, it's like it's a perfect fit, pretty much. The parking brake line has to be out of the way. So that this can come over and then pull directly back to me, I believe. 
So I need to figure out how to get that parking line off. I'm just going to try giving it a haul. Come back here. Some kind of retaining clip in there, I think, to keep it. Yeah, I think there's some kind of expanding clips in there. That's keeping us inside. I just gotta figure them out. Alright, so I'm gonna just I'm gonna try something here now. I have no idea if it's gonna work. But basically I'm gonna use this kind of flimsy string as a spring compressor right, so now I got a bit on each one the question is how strong it's going to be. Even if I just get it and wrap it, might be enough. Okay. Alright. Got a little bit of compression on that spring now to get it out of our Get it out of our way a little. Let's see if I can get this to come out. I just don't know how. I'm thinking it might turn. There is a retaining clip. Push that in. Okay, that one's in. I assume there's another like it on the other side. And that's in. So we should be in a position to get it out. So that's off. Now let's see if this will go on. Is the bracket still too big to fit through? Um, oh God. That might not have helped us at all. Let's see. I assume I'm trying to get it in the right place. Like all this is cast molded. There's no more bending anything to get it to go. It doesn't go on this side. Last resort I'll try bending this out of the way. I'll go fiddle with it a little more, be right back. Alright, so after messing around with this enough, I'm making the executive decision that we will not be replacing the dust guard on these rear brakes. Not worth it. Like I say, it's, it's a dust guard. You know, I'm going to be driving mostly on pavement. Dust and dirt and everything getting in here is, is not a concern of mine. So, let's get everything uh, put back together as far as the line goes here. So, it should be 
hopefully easier going back together. Like so. I'm going to try one more thing before I give up. And that is... See if maybe there's some old. Like this looks like it should split. And yeah, this this whole piece should come forward. Four bolts out. of brake shield in there. Oh, I should pay a little more attention to the videos maybe. Okay, now the old now the old piece is coming out. Let's get, a, get some snips. Let's snip that. Again, I'm sorry for the sound of one of my neighbors mowing the grass. Not a, not a very opportune time for it. With us doing this. piece right there. So that would explain why things weren't seeding in appropriately. At least that was in there keeping this in relatively good condition inside. Alright, I'm going to retry this here again now. Take off this bottom corner. And in here. Okay, I'm gonna take, take this pin out again. Take that off. Of course I shouldn't have put my brake line back on now. I gave up on that too soon apparently. I'll try to squeeze this down here. Have that brake line out the way again, wouldn't it? Oh my. Well, I'm gonna have to, I think I'm gonna have to take it off again. I'll I'll do that off camera and be right back. Alright, so I got that off again. Use the exact same method. Now let's see what happens. Try feeding the bracket into the hole first and rotate it at the same time. It fit. Oh my god, it fit. Let's get our bushing in here. Like so. And there we have it.
All right, that looks good, doesn't it? All right. Put our second piece on. Top in first. I don't know. That and then the bottom. Behind. And here. Such. Oh boy! Here we are. All right, that looks good. That looks real good. I think everything that should be sticking out the back is sticking out the back. So um, yeah, we'll get this put back on. I guess I should probably tighten these up a little bit here, right, maybe, just to keep everything in line. One thing I am going to do though, take a bit of, a little bit of white grease. Just hit a few uh, key areas. This won't be spinning, all right. So this is all stationary, so it won't flick grease off. It shouldn't. All right. So this is one of those instances where I should have had more patience and more persistence, but. I started to quit early, and as a result, I thought of the solution, and I had to backtrack and take off the lines again. So sometimes you just gotta stop, take a break, get a fresh head, come back and have another look at it. Exactly what they mean when they say go, go clear your head. And now look at us. We're being successful so far. All right. And you saw it. I I had quit on that dust guard, right? So don't give me too much credit. I uh, I definitely quit on that dust guard, but just reevaluate it. And now here we are with a successful dust guard installation. All right, so that's good. All right, I'll give them another tighten when I'm done and satisfied that everything is good. All right, so there we are, that's in place. A little bit of grease for my gloves, don't hurt. Alright, so that is in place. So now I got to reinstall the parking line again now. At this very moment, if you're wondering what someone is thinking, right now I'm picturing golf and someone taking a shot and people in the audience screaming out, Get in the hole! In the hole! Because that's exactly what I want this pin to do right now. Come on. In the hole. Oh my god. I swear I'm going to have rust embedded in the back of my head from sitting up too soon and hitting that old rusty wheel well. Okay, that's in there, let's give it a little uh, white grease inside and on the back. Like so. And we'll reattach this bracket here. Oh my 
got to do it again. That's <laughs> crazy. A bit of slack here. brake fluid leak. This is not good. The hard line got a break in it. It's coming from Good, not good. Now what? Now what to do? What to do? What to do? I could try tightening this. I think it's the actual line itself. Looks to be. Now, now we just stepped into a whole another world. Crap. Yeah, we just. We just crossed the line, folks. This hard line just cracked. I don't know what to do. Hard line is definitely something I'm not getting into. This is why I was talking about getting this done and getting her into the garage so that they could deal with something like this. But no, this is trouble. This is a big job. This is a big job. It's hard lines. And this ain't like a cut on your finger that you hold pressure to and it stops. This is full on rusty line. Rusty line. It ain't coming from the fitting. There's no tightening that. This is ready to fall apart. Well. Well, well, well. So. I'll let that drip for now and I'll try to piece this back together to get it in condition for uh, to be able to wheel out of here but this is the exact, exact thing that I was afraid of unfortunately this is money this is money having to be spent, having to be spent. Oh my. Alright, so the goals have changed. The goal is now get this piece back together as best we can. And this has to go to the garage. That's official. It has to go to the garage now. So we need a cap and a pin. That in there, 
I need some brake grease. Is this it? And what's today? Today's Saturday. It's all going to be gone. Um, not good. Not good. Not good at all. Not good at all. I get some brake grease for this pin. Alright, so I'm just in fast forward mode here now. Getting everything tightened down. Brake grease inside this cap. Pin in. Oh man. This is beyond disappointing, folks. Beyond. Absolutely. Absolutely disgusting. Oh, I shouldn't. Shouldn't have even bothered at this point. I don't know. If I don't know if I've saved myself an accident or uh, or money or but going slow and telling you what I'm doing is kind of gone out the window a bit. All right. Steady drip, and there's nothing open today or tomorrow. And that's just steady. I don't even know if tape or anything will help that, or if it just finished cracking it off. Well, that's disappointing. That is so disappointing. What other hardware do I have here? Practice and screw, alright? Yep. Well, that just. That just sealed the deal. On trying to save a bit of money. But, you know what, I'll take the positive side of things that this, that could have happened while I was driving. That could have caused an accident of some kind. stuck right now. I am so stuck. Getting so close to putting all this together properly, too. Now, I'm gonna have to get a towed, anyways. I can't drive with brakes leaking like that. So 
So I might, uh, I don't know, I might just continue on with the replacement to replace everything I can. So what I'm doing is just lining up where it's supposed to go and then it needs to stretch a little. Now, how disappointing is that? Right? place down below. Look how well we were going to do. Look how good we were doing. Tell that hard line went. We were doing so well. All right. So that's in place. Now, I guess next to be the rotor, get the rotor put on. So as for now, I'm just trying to get this in a flatbed worthy condition. Something to keep to keep uh, the slow bleed away. I'm not going to do anything. So, we are in for trouble. Absolute trouble. Right, like, you get this far into it, you don't, you don't quit on her. But my god, the poor luck here is beyond measure. Alrighty, so, so far the electrical tape is holding the brake fluid in. Obviously is not a working fix <laughs> by any stretch of the imagination. But if I could keep it from uh, leaking everything out, that's all right to get me through until Monday. All right, so I'm going to get this here put back into place. Alrighty. Next on the agenda is the caliper. But first the rotor, I mean. So I'm just gonna step outside real quick, kind of take the rotor, give it a spray with some brake parts cleaner. Doesn't really want to go in there. I just might have. I'm gonna have another little look at what's going on here. 
All right, I'm back, and I I reversed the uh, the, P, the bracket holding the brake shoe on. So hopefully that was what will do the trick. Whew. she's that's a tight fit. Very tight fit. Hopefully I don't need no sledgehammer to get this one on. <laughs> oh man, like all the adjusters are all in as tight as they can go, so it's not like there's more clearance that I can gain anywhere. Let's see. This is like taking the rotor off only in reverse. And listen, I know full well. There's probably some of you out there now just going, Oh my God, what's he doing? <laughs> The adjusters for the shoes are fully tightened in. There's no extra space for them to go. I know that this is definitely more friction than it's supposed to be putting the rotor back on over the shoe. I know it's supposed to be like a bit of uh, resistance, but not this much, right? So I know that and I'm accepting of it because I want to get this rollable. And uh, if it's a late enough time in the day, I'd probably even try driving it. Definitely not in rush hour traffic or anything, that's for sure. But I'm thinking that at least with this on, and the shoe got so much resistance, hopefully it'll wear away at the shoe enough so that this becomes freewheeling again. So yeah, so that's pretty much repeating what was happening when we were trying to get the rotor off now to... Alright, she's on there good and solid. But I'm not... Uh, I'm not going to worry about it. I'm just going to put it back like that way. Bring the heat shield back off the rotor a bit. That's out of, out of place. Next, I will. I guess I'm going to put the new caliper on, to be honest with you. Right? Like, if I'm putting it back together, I might as well put it back together right. So, let me get those parts and everything out here, and we'll, uh, we'll begin work on that. Alrighty, so here's our new caliper. Hardware for that. Caliper itself. I'll uh, get the saddle bracket off of there. Now, what size are they? That's the question. So just so we're clear here now, guys, I'm I'm in recovery mode here now, in the sense that I just want to get this put together, be rollable. Depending on time of evening or something, maybe drivable. <laughs> Just in the interest of saving me a uh, hundred bucks in a tow fee, but we'll see. It's 
story of our lives with these calipers, isn't it? Keep from getting grease all over me. So yeah, if you haven't guessed already, based on what's happened up to this point, the garage is gonna or the, the garage is gonna see this truck again. Hopefully I've done enough to save myself a good chunk of labor costs, but Apparently, all my efforts to prevent having to bleed a whole brake system are going to be for naught. Because these guys are going to have to replace the hard lines and re-bleed everything. So as far as my part in that goes, it's pretty much going to be try to get some extra work and, uh, and pay a garage to do this properly for me. Alright, so caliber piston is off. Saddle bracket is loose. I'll get some grease and hardware in here and we'll have that ready with pads and everything to go on but not until I get this hooked up to the brake line. Banjo fitting is already there on ready to rock. I'm going to pre-assume that I'm going to have issues with the copper nut on the uh, current one. So I'll get my snips ready for that saddle aside and we'll go from here right it's uh that's troublesome trouble trouble all right so ladies with the saddle <clears throat> so brings us to this this caliper and this line is in half decent shape but it could be better The garage is, I'm going to have to just listen to the garage when they tell me what kind of state this is in. Now, am I ready? No, I got to, okay, snips are there. Let's get the tools out of the way. We're about to get into some, uh, we're about to get into some mess, I think, again. Hopefully not as much as before. spot to get a bit of torque on this. Okay, that is broken. Starting to drip. Let's get the new caliper banjo bolt loose and ready to go. Copper nut is on there, ready. Let's uh, let's go for it. Just knocking off some of the old rust and stuff there. I can wiggle this down a bit. Alright. The old caliper's off. It's a little bit harder to get to get at. If I put um, grip onto it, that that's working. That's better than snipping. I guess we're learning. 
We're learning. Yay. Good. Here's my copper washer. Let's try to keep this new rotor clean. Just gently wipe away some of this rust. Keeping things as clean as possible for a good seal. Let's go. Banjo bolt. And then new caliper. Now this should go like this. Oh, almost forgot again. The second copper washer. There we go. Now caliper. Oh my gosh. I should just do this without gloves so that I can get it first try. Gloves just get in your way sometimes. Okay, threads are started. Let's get the line lined up. Alright, let's swap over to the socket. We should hopefully get a good seal out of this one. It was in a lot better shape than the, the two fronts were. It's leverage. There we go. All right. Okay, so far so good. We'll see once the caliper fills up with brake fluid, if that still holds it in there. I'll... All right. Let's clean that off a little more. All the brake fluid off as we can. I'll give it a final cleaning once it's on there. So yeah, I just think if we never had that solid line break, we'd be closer to finishing, but we would have had a risk still in there without knowing about it, how easy that was waiting to break and come through the rust. Okay, so we'll leave that there like that, lay it back out of the way. And now I'll get the saddle and pads and everything ready. So one other thing I've got to do with the caliper before I finish with that is put on the hardware. There's actually hardware that goes directly on the caliper with this one. That's this little spider looking one here. That goes up in the ceiling of the caliper. You see me remove that during uh, the removal process. So let's figure out how that goes up there. I believe that's it. Should be it. 
Alright, next, lay that aside and we will get onto the saddle and uh, a bit of grease. good as it needs to be. I believe that is okay there. There we are. Okay, the sliders there. Spread around the, the grease. Share the love. And that's that. Now the thing we're putting this back on is that uh, that guard that we had trouble taking off before has to go back on. It doesn't have to, but probably just as well to do so. So now with that done properly, I'll uh, get ready to reinstall, I guess. I'm going to go tidy up those bolts. Where are they? Um, If you recall, when I took off the bracket before, they were kind of messy with Loctite. So I'm just going to use a wire brush, clean those up a little bit, see what kind of state I can get them back into, and then we'll reinstall. Alright, so let's get out the Dremel, try to tidy these bolts up. I'm getting to the end of my rope on this project, to be honest with you now at this point, guys. That's one tidied up. Let's go grab the other one. So what I'm just using here is just a wire wheel on the Dremel, okay? That's all it is. And safety goggles are on, of course. E
tidy it up. Just give you a little show of those. Alright, much much nicer. So let's go over and try to start reassembly. Okay, so our bolts, a little shield, I'm just gonna go like that. And then this bracket will hold that on. I swear, trying to get this on with the shield. I don't know. I don't think it's worth it. But really, what am I hitting with this? That's going to go inside the rim. Screw that. Easier when you're not trying to get on that darn old uh, shield. And really, what's it protecting? Nothing, right? Because like all this is inside the wheel. So, yeah, there's nothing there to protect. It. It's not already protected by the wheel. that. Now, let's try to slide the pads in there, I guess. One side. Two sides. Like such. Now, slider pins are already good and lubricated. I've already seen that. Um, at this point, I'll get my second bolt right here. Was that? I think they were 18s. Yeah. Yeah. Where's my ratcheting 18? Alright, that's it. Next on the list, slider pins. And these were 17s, right? Yes, they were. Alright, so caliper has to go down. Slider pins are in and good. So let's bring this down. Push in on the slider pins a little bit to get them out of the way.
if I can get the bottom one on now as well. Okay, so I'll get, I'll get a 17 socket now. get a, one more little turn on that bottom one and I'll be happy with it. Working in this tight space does not help. Alrighty, so pretty sure everything is tight where it needs to be. Calipers on, pads are on, rotors on. Heat shield done. Now, as far as this rotor turning with that much, I had to hammer that on. Hopefully, the parking brake doesn't get in the way of that and heat things up to uh, any kind of a concernable level. Concerning level, all right. Uh, uh -huh. Sometimes I think uh, where I talk out loud so much and I, I speak my thoughts, sometimes I swear, like when I list off, oh, the worst thing could happen here is. And it seems like somebody hears me and makes sure that that happens because everything that can go wrong, I think, has gone wrong. And, um, and that's no fun. That definitely takes the fun out of things. Right. Alright, I'm going to gravity bleed this caliper now. Get that done. I uh, don't know, I don't think that'll handle enough pressure to do a real bleeding and breaks. It's just going to just going to ooze probably. I'll, I'll gravity bleed this caliper at least and it might be I don't know, half usable. I'll have to see if I can drive this anywhere. We will see. Maybe tonight I might try to drive this in and park it by a garage. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Alright, I'm just going to waste a little bit of time and I'll be back with you guys to, uh, to finish this video off. Alright, everything else that can be done at this point in time you have seen me already do in previous videos. And this video is already super duper long and uh, and frustrating so I'll uh, I'll chat with you guys in a second we'll finish this video off alright everybody there it is that's the end of the fifth installment in this brake change series and unfortunately we cracked into a rusty hard line so options are limited I, I could get a hard line kit and try to be doing that myself but I'd be crawling around on my back and and doing stuff that I'm not really comfortable doing. All right, this uh, this amount that I've done already has definitely surpassed my comfort level. Uh, but I'm just trying to save a few bucks, right? Like you're talking uh, pretty high labor rates at most of these garages. So you know, having 75% of the brake change done is definitely going to save me money. But now we're into a bigger job of replacing a whole set of hard lines because, you know, if these are rusted out in the back, what's to say another one's not going to uh, crack and start leaking and, and you lose your brakes? It's not a, not a safe situation to be in. So we're in a pickle now where there's no more delaying the hard lines. It's, it's going to have to be done. And so tallies up another bill. And uh, I've already been under pressure as it is to try and minimize the bills because if it was up to my wife, this truck would be gone. So I've been trying to justify her existence, 
but we're in a we're in a real slump here as one thing after the next this truck is trying to die and I'm doing everything I can not to let that happen and I can't justify not fixing it at this point in time like you know the price of changing those hard lines what's that going to get me in terms of a newer vehicle a payment two payments um, it's just it's not there but it stings so hard it stings so hard dishing out this money on a 17 year old truck not knowing how much life is really left in her you know once the, the drivetrain uh, acts up or the engine you know that's when you know for sure like ignore the bodywork alright the bodywork is just you know, it's just rust it's rust on the lips of fenders you know but the frame is good all right, the frame is solid, the engine is, is solid as far as I know, transmission's good. Like, all these things that are good with the truck, I need to weigh out and balance against the trouble that I'm having with the brake system. All right, and trouble with the starter, trouble with the injector, trouble with the fuel tank. I don't know where to stop. And, um, I just, I'm going to have to get the hard lines replaced. There's, the risk benefit ratio is still playing in favor of fixing it and so I can't give up just yet um, despite the bill just getting bigger and bigger I probably could have cut, cut my losses a while back and moved on probably would have been okay um, but at the same time I think I can end up ahead as long as this is the end of the troubles right like holy moly um, like, other than that hard line breaking today, we would have done a good job here. Right? This is, it's done. I just can't do a final bleed on the brakes because I can't fully pressurize that line because it'll probably start spraying brake juice everywhere, you know? So, um, really in a pickle. It might be good enough for me to drive it to get it into uh, a garage. Like I say, if I, I just take my time, go on roads less traveled, and go at a time when there's very little traffic. That would be ideal. And then save that hundred bucks for the tofu, you know. Um, but, you know, this is what I've done here with this brake attempt, and I, I think most of it was success, but I got in over my head towards the end here where we are now. But when I made this YouTube channel, and I was coming up with a name and being Mansum what it means to me is you know not to be sexist or anything but to be manly to a point where you're willing to show up try something do your best put everything you got into it and be willing to end up with failure but also you know, bask in the joys of victory. And up to this point, we've been having some pretty good victories. You know, we're getting through the hard stuff. Uh, but we're at a point now where I'm just not... I know my own limitations, and we've reached it. All right? Um, as I want the braking system on this truck to be safe and secure, and getting into hard lines is not... It's not my thing. I just... I can't do that. It's... I don't have the proper lift to be able to get up and under and doing all those clips to hold the hard lines in. I know my limits and we've reached them, like I said. So I, what I think being mansome is, is stepping up to the plate, like I say. Doing your best. Giving it your all. Get that sweat rolling. Get the frustration out. Whatever you got to do to know that you are giving it every bit you got. And then... Be willing to accept the results and uh, be a man. Accept what happens, right? But you got to try. If if you never tried, well then, that's just a poor situation to be in. Is being someone who doesn't try. All right, so that's that's where we've ended. This is going to have to be the end of the series, right? The only thing left for me to do now is throw the wheel on that, the tire, and uh, get it to the garage. 
tell them I need a new set of hard brake lines and whatever else they see um, to do, and uh, possibly four, you know, brake hoses there as well, the flex lines. But basically, I'm going to have to hand this project off to someone who knows what they're at, has the equipment and the know-how, and um, who have done this for numerous, numerous times. I've I've priced the brake line kit. It's you know in the two hundred and fifty, three hundred dollar range. Uh, labor on that. I don't know where that's going to go, right? So, uh, especially then if you get in flex hoses as well, four of those, they're like 35, 40 bucks a piece. You're talking another 120. So, we're talking, you know, 500 bucks right off the get go just in parts. So, the labor for this job, you know, and then to complete the other wheel for me as well. So, it's a tough pill to swallow. It's a very tough pill to swallow. But as of right now, I feel like it's justified. So instead of driving the truck or having to tow it off to the dump over a set of brake lines, it just doesn't make sense at this point in time. So here we are. End of the series. We won't be coming back to this. All right. <laughs> this is going to be done by the garage, off camera, and uh, it's out of our hands now. All right. The only thing I need to do now is find a way to get the truck to the garage. And that's that's the end of my role in what we've done to this point. So I hope you have enjoyed the series. I hope you learned something. Uh, I've learned, you know, my uh, tolerance for patience and persistence. And I know my limits of when to give up. And we've reached that point. So when the next video will be coming for you guys should hopefully be sometime in the near future. We got some projects going on on the land and our super secret project is still in the works. Uh, just some delays with that. But uh, I'm going to be happy to wash my hands of this. But I'm also sad that it got to the point where I'm going to have to dump more cash into this thing than I already have. I thought I was saving a lot by doing the breaks. And I did, but we're, we're tallying it up again. That's it. That's all you can do. So until next video, hope you're happy. Hope you're healthy. Take care of each other. And peace out.